Boy, these stories about Joe Biden's uh, millions and millions of dollars in bribery uh, payments that he accepted while he was vice president sure are wild. If I were a few years younger and a bit less informed uh, when it comes to uh, American history, I might just think that this would get him into trouble. I might just think that he could be impeached or uh, perhaps even prosecuted for crimes. I would think maybe the public would be outraged at this and they would want uh, they would want something to happen to him. They might want him to resign. But seeing as how I am not that naive, um, I don't, I'll be honest right up front before we even get into the details, I don't think anything's going to happen here. Sure. Is it a scandal? Of course it's a scandal. But that's it. It's not going to do anything else. It's going to, you know, he might have to, he might be asked uncomfortable questions by New York Post reporters. Uh, but, you know, the rest of the media is going to not ask him about it. They won't be concerned. And um, the people who voted for him in 2020 and plan to vote for him again in 2024 are not going to change their minds over something like this. Now, sure, is there some small contingent of persuadable voters who, um, if presented with overwhelming evidence, might think, you know what, maybe this Biden guy being corrupt uh, isn't such a good thing. You know, maybe um, I'll vote for the other guy. Um, do some of those people exist? Oh, quite sure, yeah, but it's not a critical mass of the population. It's not like all of America is going to turn against him and his approval rating is going to drop to 5%. All the politicians in Washington are corrupt. Biden just happens to be amongst the most corrupt politicians in Washington. And so I see this as essentially his Benghazi. It's going to be the things that the Republicans in Congress talk about and fundraise off of for the next uh, two years at the very least, assuming that, you know, he is defeated or decides not to run in 2024. Um, but, you know, until Biden is gone, the um, House and Senate GOP are going to fundraise off of, wow, Biden's corrupt. We need to hold him accountable. Please donate money to us so that we can, you know, get more Republicans in Congress so we can impeach him or something like that. They might not even punish that, but they'll just say, well, we need to we need to investigate him harder. <laughs> you know, we need to uncover even more corruption. And they might hold hearings where they shout at people. Maybe they're going to bring Hunter and subpoena him. And they're going to, and Hunter's going to say, going to plead the fifth. And they're going to say, you know, um, uh, you know, you took money illegally on behalf of your father, didn't you? And he's going to plead the fifth. And they're going to grandstand. And at the end of the day, everyone's going to shake hands and, and go home and, um, you know, go to their cocktail parties at, at 7.30 that night. And. Uh, and they're going to talk about, you know, what a nice day they had. And life goes on. So it is a big number when you have the House GOP saying, you know, they 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 think so far based on what they've seen that between 20 and 30 million dollars uh, in bribes were funneled to Biden and his family um, while he was vice president. That to me, you know, hey, I mean, it's a big story. I wish I could be excited about it. I'd like to get into it, but I, I'm not going to get my hopes up that something is going to happen. You know, who cares that you know we have the knowledge? Um, you know, we know we know lots of things that um, don't impact the course of events. It doesn't change anything whether we know it or not. That doesn't mean I'd rather remain ignorant. I wouldn't. Um, I, I'm glad to know the truth about certain issues, even if I can't change the course of history. But at the end of the day, what's done is done. I won't pretend that this is going to change anything. Now, maybe there's a chance at using this corruption um, to argue against supporting the war in Ukraine. There's a chance to do some good um, with this information. But I know the Republicans in the House aren't going to do that because they support the war in Ukraine. But the implications here, are pretty, it's a pretty easy argument to make. Biden was funneled tens of millions of dollars by Ukrainian oligarchs while he was vice president. And now that he is the president, he is sending Ukraine tens of billions of dollars in aid. So that's a pretty good rate of return if you are the Ukrainian um, uh, gentry. They collectively supply Biden 
with some with some walking around money, tens of millions of dollars, and he sends them tens of billions. And frankly, at this point, it's a blank check. Um, we could get to a trillion dollars in Ukraine aid uh, before all is said and done. And so it seems like a pretty obvious uh, quid pro quo. Now, the media will never admit to that. They'll say, well, no, there's no evidence of that. They never say, well, that's how a quid pro quo works. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You don't spell it out explicitly. There's no contract, you know, where Biden, um, you know, was uh, was handed over tens of millions of dollars while he was vice president. And he said, now, if I ever for one day become the president of the United States, uh, I promise to uh, supply you with unlimited funds to wage a war against Russia. You're never going to find anything like that. And so because of that, the media will always say everything's fine. Everything's on the up and up. Um, and people will use that, um, what little plausible deniability there is there, and I mean, it's paper thin, uh, they will use that to justify, you know, still voting for Biden because, hey, these are people who want to support the Ukraine war anyway, um, and they want to support whoever's against Trump or the current or whoever the Republican nominee is going to be. I expect Democratic voters to take these tens of millions of dollars in bribes about as seriously as Republican voters take Trump's overdue library books. I'm not drawing a moral equivalency between the two. I'm not saying that um, taking tens of millions of dollars in bribes is the same as having overdue library books. What I'm saying is, is that while Trump supporters, uh, I think rightly look at what's being done to Trump as a witch hunt and understand that if it were any other uh, president, um, he would not, be going, be, he would not be put through this. He would not be charged uh, with such ridiculous crimes, especially since we have the direct Clinton sock drawer, sock drawer precedent. Now I lost my train of thought. That was a two-part point that I was just making, and I made the first part. Now I can't remember the second, so oh well. The point is, people are willing to tolerate almost anything from their side as far as stuff like this is concerned. Um, there is no, um, there's no real line anymore for, uh, you know, remember Trump's famous line, I, can, I could literally shoot people on Fifth Avenue and they'd vote for me anyway, uh, which was seen as very insulting to his voters. It's, that statement is pretty much true of anyone at this point. The tribes are set. At the end of the day, Dem voters are going to vote blue no matter who, as far as, you know, for the most part. And the same is true of Republican voters. Now, there are the, the difference, the, who wins the election determines, uh, is determined by who's going to energize the low propensity voters to get out the most. The people who don't normally vote, people who don't vote every time, because essentially on the, either side, you have the partisan drones who show up to vote for their party every single time. And then you've got people who are not necessarily moderate, but people who are not really uh, in love with either side but who can be persuaded to get out to vote if they have good reason to. And so how will this bribery stuff play with that group of people? I don't know. They might care, they might not, but the same is true of Trump's overdue library books, um, in which will be portrayed much more negatively in the media than whatever Biden has done. So I don't wanna act like I'm, I'm totally uh, I, I think that this information might as well have not come out. I'm glad it came out. But to me, there's nothing so far to suggest that it will change uh, the course of history. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.